Hi everybody, this is the uh, third video from the third status session that we all worked on um, this this past week. Uh, just same as before, I'm just going to work through the things, so if, if you want to go through this again and, and want some help, then, then you can watch watch this uh, and, and sort of redo the exercise. So first thing we need to do, we have our Stata environment here. The first thing we do is we have to open the data, so we just click on the little folder and then find class3.dta. So remember, this is the data set from the top of the Blackboard. <clears throat> I'll delete the one from the bottom. I haven't done that yet. Um, but the one at the bottom is corrupted. Uh, so get the one from the very top of the Blackboard page uh, and on your computer. So we click on that. We see Stata, it's black. So Stata has agreed to do it. And over here, we see where we have our variables. So age, years of education, uh, sex, the respondent sex, happy, marital, status, and income. <clears throat> so. As usual, we want to describe first just to see what's in our data set. So that will just match what's here in our variable window. We can see everything's there. We next want to summarize, and that will give us an idea of the distribution of these variables and help inform us as to what exactly it is that we're working with. <clears throat> so here, we see we have 4,080 observations. You can also see that in the uh, describe, if you look up here. But down here, we see 4,080 observations. Here we have the mean age, 46 and a half years standard deviation of age, minimum 18 years old, so we're looking at adults, legal adults, up to 99 years old. We have education um, uh, that goes 4,080, goes from six up to 99, so this is probably a top code, that's not something that we used, <clears throat> uh, we did in the class, uh, but we can have a look, so if you do summarize, and then educ, comma, d, so now we can have a real closer look. This gives a fuller distribution, and we see yes, some of the largest values are 99. You may want to have, you may want to deal with those. It's probably top coded, meaning uh, that we don't know how many years of education these people have. Okay, but there appears like there, there's, there's not too many of them. So once we've got a look at that, uh, we have our means and our standard deviations here. The next thing we have to do is generate a number of variables. So we want log of income. We want age and age squared. Uh, we want to create some dummies for university education, for male. So rather than, if you look here at our sex indicator, it's one. So it's equal to one for men and two for women. We want that to be one for men and zero for women, or one for women and zero for men. It doesn't matter which way it goes, but we just want it to be a binary indicator. And we need to deal with our happy. Indicator. So our measure of happiness is one, two, or three, depending on how the person is. But we don't want to include that sort of discrete odd uh, little variable. We want something that's binary on the left-hand side. There are methods to deal with something that's one, two, three, but uh, they're beyond the scope of this course. So I'm just going to go ahead and create those variables. I have a bit of text over here that I can use. Um, log of income, square of age. Uh, I'm using some slightly different syntax to create the dummies, it's just a bit shorter, but if you want to do it, <clears throat> say for education, you would do generate, uh, let's call it uni equals 1 if educ is greater than 16, All right. and then we want to recode that. So now we have a variable that's equal to 1 if the person has more than 16 years of education, and dot if they don't, missing, missing information, right? So we need to recode those dots into zeros. Oop. Sorry, this is a mistake in my code. Recode, we have to tell us data what we want to recode. So recode uni dot equals zero. See, everybody makes mistakes. So <clears throat> um, now we have a dummy, so you can do summarize uh, uni, and you see we have all our observations, we have equal to 1, minimum of 0, and the mean is not 0.11, so 11% of our sample uh, has a university level education. Okay, we already did the square of age up here, we generated, this is another way you can create a dummy by doing this, so if we do summarize male, you'll see it's also dummy 0 and 1. So there's two, this is a valid way to do it. It's just a shortcut. Um, the what we did with generating it and then recoding it is it do, it'll achieve exactly the same thing. Um, this is just a little bit more transparent. 
Uh, and we need to generate our happiness one, which we'll do using a shortcut as well. Okay. Now we're ready to run our regression. So there's our initial regression. We have log income. We have age, age squared, the marital status, male, and university. So what you're going to need to be able to do for, say, the exam and in life in general, when you're looking at research or you're interested in, in, in doing research yourself, is being able to interpret these coefficients. So first thing first, everything is significant. All of these t-statistics are bigger than 2 or 1.96. Remember, that's the official number, 1.96. 2 is just a rule of thumb. Uh, none of the confidence intervals contain 0. And the p-values are all smaller than 0.05. So we can say, for sure, all of these things are significant at the 5% level. In fact, these are all significant at the 1% level. As you see, all the 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Okay. So we don't have to worry about significance. Everything we found is significant. Income has a positive relationship. So a 10% change in income. So if you increase income by 10%, you'll increase the probability that the individual is very happy relative to not being very happy by 2.8% or 2.9, if we're rounding correctly, percentage points. It's very important you understand the difference between percent and percentage points. So we have the binary variable on the left-hand side is 0 to 1, or 0 to 100 if it's easier to think that way, right? So 100% chance that they're very happy, or 0% chance. And we're looking at the impact of these different variables on that probability. So does more income make people more likely to say that they're very happy? And the answer is yes, according to our research here. Age and age squared. So here we have uh, a quadratic, so we're allowing for the effect of age to change with age. Right? So this is a U-shaped relationship. So we have a negative uh, on the level and a, and a positive on the quadratic. So uh, and then you can work out what the minimum, sorry, what what at what age people are least likely to say that they're very happy. So in one of the tutorials, that we there was a typo and I didn't catch it that we were saying most happy. Uh, at, at what age, sorry, at what age are people most likely to say that they're very happy? But we actually have a U-shape, not an inverted U-shape, so we're actually least likely to say that they're very happy. And if you take the first derivative of this function with respect to age, and then solve, set it to zero and solve for age, and you can find out the answer to that. So marital, that's a dummy equal to one if the person is married and zero otherwise. So if marital equals one, this coefficient comes into play and it increases the probability that somebody says they're very happy by 34 percentage points. So being married seems to make it more likely that people are very happy. Being male, on the other hand, is negative. So being male decreases the probability uh, that someone says they're very happy relative to being female by 14 percentage points. And uni, again, that's a dummy, going to university increases the probability of saying that you're very happy uh, by 10 percentage points relative to people who did not go to university. That's the base group. Okay, so here the base group is relative to single people, relative to women, and relative to people that did not go to university. Oh, the next thing we do is we create an interaction term because we're interested in whether the relationship between marital status uh, and being very happy and income and being very happy depend on each other. All right, so the, we can interact this with anything. In this exercise, we just thought, well, maybe marital status, that effect on income, or sorry, the effect of marital status on the probability of being very happy depends on the amount of income that the person has. And conversely, the impact of income depends on the person's marital status. So we're allowing both of those effects to vary with each other. All right. So we then we create an interaction term. The interaction term is simply the product of the two variables that we're interested in interacting. We then uh, re-specify our model, so we include income again, log income, uh, marital status, and the interaction term, as well as our other covariates. And we end up with this result. So our income effect is about the same, the effect of age is about the same as, as, as the model without the interaction. The effect of marital status seems to have flipped, it's now negative. Except the impact of marital status is no longer this coefficient because the variable marital, marital appears here by itself and it appears in the interaction term. Remember, the interaction term is the product of income and marital status. So if you take the derivative of this function with respect to marital status, you end up with this coefficient plus this coefficient times the mean of log income. So just write it out and take the derivatives and you'll see what, what happens. 
okay? And you'll find that actually the, over, the, the average effect of marital status is positive once you account for this, uh, the income and the fact that marital status appears in this interaction term. But we can also say that the impact of marital, being married is stronger for people that have high levels of income. It's bigger in positive terms. So if instead of plugging in the mean for uh, income here, you plug in say the 90th percentile, you would find that the effect of being married is even bigger. So being married makes people happier, but being married and rich makes you even happier. Those, those, those effects relate to each other. They, they sort of work together. Conversely, if someone was very poor, it's possible that marital status, if someone had a very low level of income, it's possible that marital status might actually make them less happy. Maybe it's more stressful if you have a partner that's dependent on you. Okay? So these interaction terms reveal a lot, and they, they can give us a much deeper insight into what's going on rather than simply saying, well, there's one effect for everybody. We can now pick apart and quantitatively identify uh, this idea that, well, these effects might differ. It depends on the kind of people. It depends on, on, on other characteristics. It's not just a relationship between income and being very happy or price and demand. There's other things that are going on, and those things can be sometimes the most interesting. Okay. All right. That's it. That was it for this exercise. This was uh, a pretty brief one, but one for you guys to kind of do on your own. Do let me know if you have any questions. I'm happy to answer them when or where I can. All right. Thanks.